Hi, my name is Lasse. Today I want to talk about C Major, which is a cool new programming environment, especially focused on audio and signal processing. And uh, I want to show you how to make a simple FM synthesizer inspired by the simple FM uh, patch in Maximus P, the one that you find here. This implementation sounds like this. Should probably listen with headphones because it's uh, quite bass heavy sounds. To start from the beginning, I've just made a new folder here. I called it FM1. I've installed the C major tools from the VS Code extensions. I can create a new patch. I press Control Shift P and create a new patch. And I just want to create it without a GUI. I call this FM01, save it. I'll just begin by deleting everything so you can see from the very beginning how you build a graph in C major. A graph is kind of like a blank patch in Maximus P, but when you create a graph, you have to define uh, one audio output, which would be similar to writing a DAC with a, a mono output here. So, so let's define the first graph. So a graph has a name and I will give it the attribute of main. There's only one main graph, uh, but you are, if you are building a big synthesizer, you can have multiple graphs, but uh, this one is the entry point. So I'll give it the attribute main. I have to define an audio output stream. So, I will say output stream and I'll give it the data type of float and then I'll give it a name uh, called audio out. If I want to run my graph, then I can say control shift P and say C major run patch. And now you see uh, the patch being compiled, but without any audio processing because nothing is happening, right? So let's just start by defining the first node uh, to create some audio very fast. So I'll make an oscillator. I could give it any name, but I'll just call it oscillator. So I'll know what the node actually is doing. The node would be similar to me creating a object like this in Maximus P. So I'll create an oscillator from the standard library, oscillators namespace sign oscillator. And if you want to know how I knew that, then you can go to the C major documentation in the standard library, and you can find the sign oscillator. You can also see that you need two parameters for constructing a sign oscillator. The first one is what they call the frame type, which is the data type, like is it a float or a float 64? Uh, this will be the return type of the oscillator that you're creating. And you also need to set the initial frequency, uh, which I just set to 440 hertz, because this is what they are showing in the documentation. If you scroll up a little bit, then you can press this uh, code button, which will redirect you to the GitHub repository of C major. And here you see the processor sign, which is the one that we just uh, instantiated. It has the uh, frame type here, which is the same uh, generic type that is returned uh, with the output stream. And the output stream is similar to the output stream that we are defining here. It's just like the audio output of your synthesizer or your whatever you're doing, the auto processing. If we want this patch, then we still don't hear anything because we only created an oscillator, but we didn't patch it to the audio output. So let's do that. So we create a connection and we can patch the output from the oscillator to the audio out. If I do that right now, then I will have the full amplitude, so it will be quite loud. So let's just uh, time it with zero 01, like this, and patch it to the audio out. And if I run this patch, then I will be able to hear the processing. All right. So in Max, this is similar to doing this from 40 
n times 0 0.01 and then running this to and if you want to share them both like this right so it is actually interesting that we are hearing this in both mm. ah actually this means that it has two output channels the right and the left that makes sense that's why we could hear it in both uh, headphones uh, the reason i knew that the oscillator's output is just called out is also from the documentation uh, if you search the standard library again uh, sign then you see the endpoint here which is an output stream which is called out that's how i knew to use the out property of the oscillator before we build the fm synthesizer in c major then let's try to build it first in max to kind of get a visual understanding of what's going on so the first thing i'm doing is that i'm creating a sine oscillator i don't uh, give it a, a frequency but i will make a scope like this if i give it a, a frequency of let's say one hertz like this then you will see the amplitude variation of the carrying oscillator we call this the carrier oscillator now i just told it to be one hertz but i could also say it should be 10 hertz and then you will see there will be 10 oscillations per second a very simple fm synthesizer consists of two parts the carrying oscillator like this but it also has something called the modulating oscillator the modulator the modulator also has an amplitude output let's say that is also one hertz well, because the modulation of both of them is in the range of minus one to one where zero is in the middle like this it's the same over here these are just numbers right you can also just view the numbers like this seeing that they are oscillating between minus one and one and if we make it an even slower frequency like 0 0.1 hertz then you can actually see the amplitude variation like this right what happens if we use the amplitude variation of the modulator to change the static frequency of the carrying oscillator so this has a static frequency of 10 hertz and currently nothing is added to it so it will just be 10 but if i add and subtract the amplitude variation of the modulating oscillator then you can see that the frequency is changing over here right so it has the static frequency of 10 hertz but you are adding and subtracting one minus one to it and the rate that you are adding and subtracting to is currently 0.1 hertz right so let's say that we set this to one hertz like this so if we set this to maybe 0.2 hertz uh, like then the frequency of the carrier will sometimes be a lot faster than it is and sometimes it will be a lot slower than it is right and this is the basic setup of a frequency modulation synthesizer okay but we can make this a little bit more complicated where we introduce two parameters that are called the harmonicity ratio and the modulation index and if you want to listen to it then we just turn up the center frequency and we use and we use these two parameters to kind of drastically change the frequency constant of the signal but what they are doing is basically what I just explained uh, in a more complicated way. They are adding and subtracting to the static frequency of the carrier uh, oscillator. The way it works is that we use the carrier frequency to calculate this harmonicity radio like this. The output of, uh, of multiplying the harmonicity ratio with the carrying frequency sets the static frequency of the uh, modulating oscillator 
but we also use the harmonicity ratio here to change the modulator's uh, amplitude variation. So instead of being in the range of minus 1 to 1, we are maybe in the range of minus 10 to 10 or minus 100 to 100. If we add minus 100 to the carrier frequency, which is 100 hertz, then it will sometimes be 0 hertz, but sometimes when we add 100 hertz to it, then it will be 200 hertz. So the uh, frequency of the carrying oscillator in that case would be uh, from uh, 0 to 200 hertz. And when we change the frequency of the carry uh, oscillator, then we get these uh, very complex frequency spectrums, which are quite cool. I like these kind of uh, low frequency beating patterns. Uh, which happens when you are not using integer multiples of the modulation index and harmonicity ratio, but using some uh, kind of floating point. Uh, especially odd numbers and stuff. It's cool. Okay, but um, this is basically what we're trying to emulate in C major, so let's continue with that. <laughs> 